In this part of the series, we're going to focus on the main chimney types. There's five most common types that we come across. The masonry chimneys, type A or low temp chimneys, high temp chimneys, single and double wall black pipe, pellet venting, and we're going to look at each system in detail and discuss its main parts, drawbacks, and so on. Now let's have a look at masonry systems. Masonry chimneys have been around since the dawn of time pretty much. Since we've discovered fire we've been building chimneys out of rocks and stones and mud and whatever building material we might have had. The nice thing about these systems is that they lasted uh, a long time. As you can see here, here's two chimney systems that have been left from probably 300 years ago. As you can imagine, every fireplace built with these types of materials was going to have different characteristics. Some were safe, some not so safe, some were just downright dangerous. So by the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, we started making more and more man-made products that we could use to control the heat transfer from the fire into the building materials around it. And as we started using more and more wood products to build our homes, this was more and more important. So as you can see here, there is a certain procedure that we use today that masons use to build a fireplace. So we use cinder block and we use brick and finally uh, we started using in the 1950s a clay liner that made chimney systems and fireplace systems much more safe for people to use inside their homes. Now we're going to look at the factory built chimneys. The first type of chimney that we've seen built in a factory was called the type A chimney. One of the most distinguishing factors of this type of chimney was that it had a one inch thick wall and oftentimes it had problems inside because the chimneys got too hot. Here's an example of a chimney that has rippled due to excessive heat and there's actually some damage on this pipe as well. So when you're looking at type A chimneys, again they were rated 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit um, and today we burn our chimneys hotter if especially if you have a fire. So they're no longer rated as a suitable chimney for a solid fuel burning appliance. As you can see here, the chimneys twist together and they come apart fairly easily so you can get a good look at to inspect them. Some of them had a galvanized exterior like you see here. More often than not, when you see these chimney systems in houses today, even though they're no longer used for wood stoves. We find that they're in good condition primarily, but when you hook them up to a high temperature wood stove that has airtight fittings, that's when you start seeing the insides of these chimneys starting to fail. So now we're gonna look at high temperature chimneys. So they came into vogue about 1980 or so, and we went to this style of chimney with a two inch thick wall for the most part, there are some exceptions we'll talk about later, um, but for the most part they were a two inch thick wall and they're rated not only to a thousand degrees but to 2100 degrees and we call them a high temp chimney or an S629 rated chimney. Here's an example of one that's totally done wrong. You can see they've got black pipe outside the house to extend it up above the roof. Here's an example of a chimney that goes through a wall so we call this a base T external chimney and in part four we're going to talk about why this system isn't as good as going up straight up through the roof on the inside. Here's another example of a different brand with the same idea installed along the outside of the house. This one is a Selkirk chimney that's on display in home hardware. Uh, here's an exterior chimney again. This is an Excel chimney sold by Brock White into display here at Brock White where the chimneys go. This particular one is in a ceiling support box and goes up through the roof. This is the preferred method and I'll explain that in part four. So here's the chimney coming up through the attic space. It has an attic radiation shield around it to prevent the insulation from touching the pipe because even though it's a high temp chimney 
you do still want to have your two inch minimum clearance. And this particular chimney was an Oliver McLeod. So again, here's a chimney coming through the side wall and there's a chimney coming through the ceiling or an illustration of one. So we've looked at a few different chimney systems starting with the masonry chimneys that have been around for centuries and how they've improved and evolved but really we don't do very much of this type of chimney anymore and then we looked at the first type of factory built chimney which was the type A low temperature chimney and again it was uh, up to a thousand degrees Fahrenheit and at the time they thought that that was the type of chimney was going to serve us forever more but we determined that they were failing due to higher temperatures especially when you had a chimney fire and then we talked a little bit about S629 rated high temperature or 2100 degree temperature chimneys and those chimneys are still in use today. Uh, today we're going to look at a different type of chimney system that we use with wood stove installations. We don't connect the factory built chimney directly to a wood stove that is a freestanding wood stove. Instead what we do is we have a transition type of chimney which we refer to as flue pipe. Some people call it stove pipe. So as you can see here the first types of stove pipe that we started to see in the industry was just a basic steel stove pipe that oftentimes it just was snapped together and very simple to build but didn't last very long. The combustion gases that run up through this type of stove pipe often would rust it out in a year or so. So we started to improve on that system and we used better steels, thicker steel, and we didn't snap lock them together anymore. We welded the seams together. So we're still talking about single wall pipe. Single wall pipe requires 18 inches of clearance between the, the chimney and the combustible materials. Now you can shield it, but we're not going to talk about that in this section. So then about 25 years ago or so, we started seeing the introduction of double walled black stove pipe or flue pipe. Now the double wall pipe is far superior to anything we've seen up to this point. The double wall pipe allows you to have combustible materials as close as six inches. The double wall stove pipe is constructed using a stainless steel inner liner and a steel outer liner. By doing this, we can bring combustible materials as close as six inches to the pipe. These types of stove pipes last for a very long time when you compare them to the longevity of the old single wall stove pipe. So that's what we're using today. And I recommend double wall pipe in every install. Now I want to switch gears to another type of double wall pipe referred to as pellet venting or PL venting. I'm going to talk now about pellet venting. Pellet venting is unique because the pellet stove uses a fan inside the system. It's a mechanical system basically that delivers the pellets. We talked about that in another video. But the, the chimney system is unique because the fan actually collects the smoke from the fire and draws it outside or forces it outside. So it's a forced draft system. And that's unique from most fire systems because when you build a fire in a conventional fireplace or a wood stove, the fire itself creates its own draft. So, and we're going to talk about problems with drafting and so on in section four. But with the pellet stove, like I said, it's, it's a, a system that doesn't have its own draft, so it forces it out. So let's look at the chimney. I got a couple pieces here, and there are two different manufacturers. Pellet venting is a double wall system, like we talked about in the last section with uh, black pipe or stove pipe uh, or flue pipe. The, this chimney is, some people refer to it as a, as a B vent, but it's not a B vent, it, it's a, like more of a P vent for pellet venting. Um, in this case, I've got a piece of Excel chimney here, and again, double wall, stainless steel on the inside, 
and a metal on the outside. This particular pallet vent has a rubber gasket in it, so when you put the pieces together, it's a very airtight system. Some systems, like this one, they have a twist lock, and they, you, they, they encourage you, if some manufacturers actually require that you put a high temperature silicone on each joint. And I've installed with both of these systems, and I have my preferences, but basically you get what you can afford and what you can, uh, what you can find available in your area. And there's many manufacturers, and every year I find that there's new manufacturers coming up with different systems. They're all, they're all designed essentially the same, but they, of course, have different manufacturers and so on. The big thing is that you have to make sure that it's certified. In this case, it's ULC and here are Warnock Hershey. So they've been certified for use with the pellet stove. And that's the other unique thing about any chimney system is you have to make sure the manufacturer approves the chimney for use with the, the particular wood burning appliance. But again, we're going to talk about that in section three, inspection. So let's take a look at how the chimney is put together. Uh, in this case, on my stove here, I have the chimney coming out the back of the stove and then it passes through the wall. So we'll look at that and I'll show you how I did it at least. But there's lots of ways you can do it. So in this scenario, it comes off the back of the stove and it 45s away. And then it goes through the wall thimble which has to be certified for use with the pellet vent. It comes together and then it passes on to the outside. So here's where it comes through the wall. It has a clean out on the bottom and then it goes up and through the roof. I hope that by watching this part of the series that you've learned lots of new tips and hints about the different types of chimney systems you can have for solid fuel burning appliances. Thanks for watching.